Hi, and welcome to another episode of NotYourDad'sBeer.com. Today I'm joined by Tara Curry, lovely bartender at Star Bar, one of the best dive bar slash craft beer places in town. You can't yeah, beat it. it Had a great time here the other night with her. Definitely check it out. But today we're at Euclid Hall, the uh, quickly becoming known as the beer bar of the country. Dogfish Head owner Sam said so himself. So today we're going to kind of taste one of his beers and see what Tara thinks if you haven't had it, right? I have not. All right, so today we're doing Red and White by Dogfish Head. This is a uh, Belgian-style whip beer, 10% brewed with oranges, coriander, Pinot Noir juice, and aged on Pinot Noir barrels. Uh, so, you know, we're going to give the tribute using wine glasses because I think this is more of a wine-style beer than anything. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, shall we? Crack this open. And we'll let's pour it and see what we get. Right away, it's beautiful. Definitely pretty. Almost pours like grapefruit juice off the top. Oh wow, yeah. I'm excited, I'm smelling it. Go for it. So as you can see right off the bat, um, it's kind of a, uh, what color would you call this? I would say, not a, not a, not a really a beer term. I would say, um, like uh, tangerine or vermilion. Vermilion. That's there you what go. I'm looking for. Call it a vermilion tangerine. Mm -hmm. um, it's very pretty looking. It almost looks like it's gonna be heavy and thick with mulch, just because the head is sitting thick. Typically, when you get into a lighter style beer, the head fades real quick. Mm -hmm. Kind of sits on the top a little bit. This is thick, just like you'd get off a nice malty beer. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Let's, let's see what it's like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you smell? I smell. I smell a lot of fruit. Very fruity to me in the beginning. I don't necessarily get just orange, I just get like a combination of like fruit. a fruit basket. Yes, almost, yeah. Definitely some wild yeast going on there. Um, mm -hmm. When you get into the Belgian yeast styles, you're looking at barnyard style flavors. If you ever mm -hmm. worked with haystacks and stuff like that, it's a kind of musty yet crazy wild funky smell. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that too. Oh, let's give it a taste, see where okay. it is, right? Yeah. Cheers. That is pretty. That it's is a really so pretty good. beer. That is so good. Yeah, it's really good. I get the, um, the wine at the end, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. Because they actually put, you told me this, this is the first time I've had this beer, but they actually put wine in, in it. They brew it with Pinot Noir juice itself. Okay. And then they age it in the Pinot Noir barrel. So it's, uh, there's a lot of Pinot Noir aspects going on to it. Uh, we did talk about how the head was thick and it looked like it's gonna be a thick malty beer. Mm -hmm. It's surprisingly not. This mm -hmm. is light, clean, really mm -hmm. posh. Um, I mean, it's a big beer in the sense that it's full of lots of flavors and it's high in alcohol, yeah, but it's it's ten percent. But it's a very easy drinking beer. Yeah. I think. Well, uh, when would you drink this? I would probably drink it uh, spring, okay. spring summer, but not hot summer because I don't like high alcohol beers when it's hot because I tend to drink too much. Uh huh. Uh, but not fall or winter. Okay. Um, so moving, yeah. in, moving in the heat season, but sticking around uh, the springtime would be a good time. This is actually released in February, so based upon where you are in the U.S., February, either save it for when it starts to get a little warm but not too hot, or if February is the month for you, get it. Um, th this doesn't stay on shelves long, guys. Uh, Doc Shed is quickly becoming known as the most popular brewery in the United States. Yes, um, they are. They are. Literally, you go to a liquor store and you go, can I have dogfish? And their answer is, we're sold out and we're still waiting. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so next year when this comes available, definitely check it out. If you have a bottle now, definitely drink it. This is not a beer meant to be aged. Okay. Um, you should drink it as soon as possible. I have a geeky beer question for you. Sure. Do you know how much, how much Pinot Noir they actually put in this? You might I think not know so. The question, it might say, hold on. Uh, I, I, I'm so curious how much they're actually putting in. 11%. Nice. 11 okay. of Pinot Noir is in the barrel, 89% okay. of the beer is aged in the barrel itself. So 11% of the wine in the, in the beer. Okay. 89 on the barrel. Interesting. So that's where you get, it does have this really wine boozyness quality on the mm -hmm. finish, which makes you like, I just took a sip of a really light, flavorful yeah. Pinot almost. But it's, but it's dry. I mean, it right. has a very dry finish. It, it definitely does. That. It sort of sucks all the moisture out of your mouth in the best way possible. That, that's I don't know if really that's a good, good, that's a good <laughs> that's way a good of, uh, that's a good way. Yeah. That, that, that describes it perfectly. You are getting a little bit of spice off this, mm -hmm. really good fruits, not necessarily just orange. It does finish like you just took a sip of a Pinot Noir. It has a dry quality on the finish. It's really good. It's a really lovely beer. What yeah. would you pair it with? Um, that is a very good question. Let me think about this. So if I was going to drink it in the spring or summer, mm -hmm. maybe something a little bit lighter. Okay. Um, 
I'm a big fan of grilled veggies in the in the spring and summer. Like whatever is fresh and in season, throw it on the grill with a little bit of olive oil and lemon and salt and pepper. Cool. Maybe something like that. What about you? Um, I like that idea. A nice light salad would work. Champagne vinaigrette, something dry, but let the sweetness of this wine bring it out. Because when you put two dries together, the one that has some more fruit aspects, which would be this beer, is going to really bring out the sweetness of the dressing. So I do like a champagne vinaigrette, nice light salad, scallops. If I were to go like a main entree dish, scallops yes. is what I did. Okay. Um, the dryness of this mixed with the wild yeast and just the, the overall flavor of this really clean, clean beer cut through the richness of the scallops really balance out the dish. See that? Okay. All depending upon what you put with the scallops. But do that. I would do your vegetables okay. with scallops. We'll do that. Done. Let's do, we'll, we'll uh, get a bottle of this. Maybe you have an extra one somewhere. And we'll do it in together. It'll be fun. There you go. We're going to cook scallops. Yes. We'll share that with you as well. Ooh. Ah, so it's really are good. you a fan of the beer? I am. Um, I'm going to confess a little bit. I'm not a huge Belgian drinker. Right. Um, but, uh, but I haven't had this and I'm really, I love dogfish and I'm always excited to try new things. I would drink this again in a heartbeat. Perfect. I would I would go out and buy it if it's still available, but I don't think it, it is, or probably not. If you find this now, get, get it, it immediately, if not Get sooner. it immediately. Go okay. to a place that picks up cool beer that doesn't have any idea what they're buying, and that's where you want to buy your beer because you'd be the only one getting the opportunity to taste it. Okay. Uh, Dogfish literally hits the shelves out of the shelves less than seven days. Wow. This is one we're picking up. It comes yeah. out in February. Yeah. Check it out. Um, we're going to be talking more about dogfish down the line, Namaste, Palo Santo, and of course the famous Bitches Burger. Yeah. Look forward, stay tuned. Uh, thank you for joining us at NotYourDadsBeer.com. Tara Curry, always a pleasure. Cheers. Cheers, thank we'll you. We'll see you guys again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is not your dad's beer.